Hi guys and welcome back for another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this beautiful duffel bag. So I'm going to turn the camera around so you guys can get a good look at it. Um, I will have the, um, the pieces the pattern pieces on the blog for free but if you want the PDF pattern um, go over to my Etsy shop and you can download the full photographic PDF um, so that you can have for your own it also helps to support the channel and if you're already supporting me over on patreon then of course thank you and you will also see this up on patreon as a gift to you for supporting me um, so very little money to go over to patreon if you want to get all of my PDFs um, so yeah let's check out the bag okay so here it is it's absolutely beautiful um, it is made out of waterproof canvas only and then just four zippers um, and then of course some webbing and little notions and things so it um, it's not lined and I really wanted a bag that I could put the wet things in and the smelly gym equipment I know that sounds gross but like my kids are in Muay Thai so they have their boxing gloves and their shin pads and things like that so I really wanted a bag that I could eat I was able to you know clean and wipe out and things and I've seen a lot of duffel bag tutorials and they're beautiful but you know when it comes to cotton and things those things tend to hold the smells so I really wanted an actual real gym bag so I'm really pleased with how this one turned out I'm going to go over some of the features um, if you don't want to see them all and you just want to get to the tutorial then of course there are chapters so you can skip ahead um, but let's go through it. So we have in the front we have a slip pocket and then a zipper pocket and I really had fun with this and I used this really beautiful rainbow zippers and these adorable little pulls. My daughter absolutely loves them. How cute. This was her design. She chose the orange and the black. Um, I was a little afraid that it would be a little Halloween-y but I think it still turned out absolutely beautiful so on the side we have a zipper pocket here that goes the full length so you have all this for storage on the other side we have a a velcro pocket um, and I uh, I did do some plastic piping so this is something that will also be featured in the tutorial so if you've never done piping before or if you want to see how it's done um, you'll be able to see that so as of course um, this is a slip pocket but you can of course go ahead and customize it so if you wanted to have two zipper panels or two slip pocket panels on either side then you can really do whatever um, you prefer so on the top we have some D-ring holders here um, and then I put a crossbody strap which is great we have two handles for you know quick carrying and then we have this really big um, opening here that the zipper goes all the way around so I'm gonna open it up there is blankets inside <laughs> so just keep that in mind but um, we'll just open it up and you can see on the inside um, on the flap we have a pocket right there and this pocket will be hold on this pocket I designed so that when it is fully open it can hang down and then you can easily access things so I really like this one it's made out of mesh so it's breathable so you can put things in there you don't have to worry about you know like if it's wet or whatever it's not going to hold it and breathe and all that stuff um, on the inside I'm going to take this out we have tons of room so like I said I have blankets in there um, but lots of room it's 22 inches wide 10 inches about 10 inches tall so um, plenty of room for um, anything that you could put in there um, great for kids um, I made this of course for my kiddos so all their little equipment and stuff fits in this beautifully this is the back and if you want to do the front on the back as well you have that option um, but the back I just kind of looked plain and you know made it look nice with some extra webbing um, but yeah so 
I think it turned out really well and I hope that you give this uh, tutorial a little look-see and uh, and if you do try this I would love to see it so follow over on Instagram Facebook TikTok, all the things and uh, definitely show me your duffel bag if you do make this one so I guess we'll just get straight into the tutorial so I'm gonna go over all of the pieces that you need. I'm using the waterproof canvas. Um, I'm using orange and black. This is at my daughter's request. So I don't know how it's gonna turn out, but hopefully um, she loves it regardless. So it doesn't matter what I think. Um, so these are the outer pieces. This is the, the top portion that will have the flap in it. We have the black piece, which is going to be the bottom. I chose black just because um, it will get dirty, so that'll help at least make it look a little cleaner. And then this is the back piece of the duffel bag. Okay, so now we're going to talk about zippers. I'm using zipper by the yard, so what I do is I buy the zipper tape and then I buy the pulls. I'm using a size 5 zipper. Um, with the top zipper, it's really important to have a really big zipper, otherwise it's going to be really difficult to open. So anything greater than a 5 is going to work great, but I do recommend a 5 for sure. Um, so I'm going to have four separate zippers, if you're making it exactly the way I am. This is going to be the big one that goes with the curve. We have this one, which is a side panel. This is gonna be the front pocket zipper, and this is gonna be the interior. This is the white one. Um, so for the interior, I'm going to be using a mesh, and that's just to allow breathability and just so that you can visually see what's on the inside of the little pouch. So I have the white zipper here, and then I have a zipper pull that I will slide on um, when I'm ready. That is the inside. So now this is the side panel and I have a template that you're going to print out and it's going to be cut on the fold so that it is mirrored. And then I have little markings on it which you're going to mark with chalk or something. And then for this one, I'm going to be doing a, um, a slip pocket. So I'm going to have a little piece of Velcro on the inside. So that's going to be a slip. Of course you can customize this to be however you want. If you don't want a pocket on this at all, you can just have it plain. Um, if you want to do two zipper pockets, you can do that too. So this is the zippered portion. So we're going to have we're going to have this guy and then this here and then this one and this is where I'm going to install my all black zipper with a zipper pulled and that's going to go on top of this and then that's going to create our side zipper pocket. I have this piece here which is going to be the front zipper and slip pocket. Um, so that's going to be in between the webbing and the front of the duffel bag. I'm going to be using this orange webbing for the handles um, and I also have black webbing which will be used for my D-rings so I have a little piece of that. I have two one inch D-rings and these are going to be for the cross body strap so if you do want that option. Um, so this is going to be like the hand ones and then I mean I can also make the crossbody out of this as well but um, that's for the main the hand and then this one these ones are going to be for just installing those d-rings um, into the top of the duffel bag okay so we're going to do some cutting um, this is the top flap panel piece and we're going to be taking a template which is this guy and we're going to be cutting into it and we're just going to cut out the curved flap I guess. So what the best thing for you to do is make sure that it is 22 inches because this 22 inches is important that's the length of the bag so we're going to fold it in half. Okay so you're going to take your pattern piece and you're going to line it up on the fold of your fabric 
and this part is going to be flush with that edge. And you put some pattern weights on here and then we're going to cut it out. Now this is kind of like um, if you don't make it nice it's not going to be nice. So you only really get one shot at this so go slow if you need to. And if you wanted to trace it with a marker and cut it out by hand, you can do that too. So now you have your flat piece and then the perfect cutout of that top panel piece of your duffel bag. And then this piece is going to be exactly the same as that mesh piece and we're going to sew the one half of our zipper into that. Okay, so the next thing we're going to cut is, oh, we're going to cut this. And we're going to cut it two and a half inches down. So we're going to do that from the straight edge because we do have a curve here. So we're not going to touch that. We're going to go from this edge and we're going to find two and a half inches lining it up and then again we only have one shot make it nice there you go now we can install our zipper right there okay we're going to take this piece which should measure 11 by 12 and it's important to make sure you have the correct orientation so this is the 11 measurement okay so we are going to take our ruler and we're going to measure up five inches from the edge that is 11 inches so we're measuring up five inches we're going to take our and we're going to cut and now we're going to put another zipper there and then when, th when this is done, then we're going to be folding it and then it's going to create a zipper pocket as well as a slip pocket in the back. So that's going to be really fun. So in this duffel bag, I will be using something called piping. And this is the one that I have chosen. This is actually a plastic piping, so it's fairly tough. Um, if you wanted to make your own out of the waterproof canvas, you definitely can do that. Um, there's many tutorials on how to do that and I think I even did it on my uh, Instagram or my TikTok. Um, but this stuff is um, really great because it does add some structure to the bag. Um, it also adds durability to the bag. Um, so it's really, really fun stuff and gives nice like accent color too. I'm going to show you the one that I made my son. As you can see, I did the piping on the corner of the bag, so it adds that structure and then also stops the bag from just like breaking down from being thrown in the car and things like that. So I really like that. So I'm going to add that in. So you might not be able to do something like this and you definitely don't have to if you don't want to. I made the bag and I didn't put the piping in and it still functioned wonderfully. So it's not something that you have to do. Um, but if you wanted to explore other options, um, then something like this is super fun to add to your project. Okay, so I'm going to prepare all of my pieces first before we actually do full on assembly. So the first thing I'm going to do is install the zipper into um, this mesh piece. So these edges won't be finished. If you want to finish them with bias tape, you can. Um, if you're not too worried like me, then you can just leave them as they are. So I'm just going to put my zipper with the zipper pulled down and I'm going to have it so that the opening opens up on this side. I don't think it really matters, but uh, that's just the way that I'm going to do it because that's normally how I do it. And I'm just going to clip and I will sew down this one side and then we'll flip it and we'll do a top stitch. Just switched over to a zipper foot and I'm just going to sew along
can move our zipper out of the way and keep going. And if your mesh is a little stretchy, just be careful. Try not to stretch it out. And then we are going to flip it with the right sides. And then we'll do a top stitch. Okay, and then we'll take the other piece and we will lay that on top and try to make sure that that is even on both sides. And we'll sew this on the exact same way doing it along this edge and then we'll flip it and then we'll do a top stitch. same thing do that top stitch okay so this is how it is looking so now we're going to take our top panel and we're going to put this with the right sides on top from here we're going to take our very large zipper and we're going to start to install that. Now if you have a zipper like mine, I'm going to split it in half and work on one side at a time. Um, you can leave your zipper intact of course, but just I find this just a little bit easier to be able to completely um, take apart the zipper and then I will put the zipper pulls on once the two pieces have been installed in the fabric. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our zipper and this is the zipper teeth. This is the back side. We're going to lay it with the zipper teeth on the inside and we will clip. Now I'm just going to show you up close what I'm doing and then once I have my zipper placed then I'm going to put this over and then sort of just go like noop. Noop. <laughs> okay so when we get down to a curve you might want to kind of snip You snip on outside corners and you cut out little wedges on inside corners. So it's just gonna help to like spread out the tape and have it ease around that corner better. And feel free to use lots of clips because this zipper and then the inside zipper will be the most difficult. So hopefully you have a little bit of ex experience with the zippers. If you haven't, definitely making some zipper pouches will give you some good practice before attempting something like this but just take your time okay 
so we're just going to fold that down and then we'll just put that in the seam as well. So from here, we're just going to sew all the way around. So just take your time. Use an awl if you need to. And I'm not going to do it right up against the teeth because I do want a little bit of zipper tape to be showing. And that's just going to help um, make it easier to use your zipper. So now we're just going to go around the corner very slowly if you need to. You just don't want to get those zipper teeth caught. Lift your presser foot if you need to. So now all you need to do is turn it right sides out. And make sure that your zipper is coming out nicely. And most of my tutorials, I think like all of them, I would do a top stitch. But with duffel bags, they never ever do a top stitch. So, because the zipper kind of going to kind of go down um, and it just looks better for some reason it just kind of works out better so that's this and if you wanted to do like a quick top stitch along here just to keep that into place you can but that's going to be really uh, nice and functional when it is in the bag Okay, so now we can set that aside and now we're going to work on the other zipper pocket, um, the side panel. So we're going to be using just a black zipper and we're going to do basically the same thing. We're going to assemble this panel and then once the zipper is in there, we're just going to kind of put that right on top. So we don't need this big panel yet. We're going to just use these two pieces and we're going to put that on. I'm going to use my little dingle hopper and I'm going to put my pole on now and just make things easier. I call it dingle hopper because it's just a fork that I screwed to a piece of wood and it puts on my zippers nicely. Okay, so opening on this side and I'm just going to put that like that. And I'll just do all the steps at the, ta at the, the sewing machine because you already kind of got the idea from the last one that we're just going to do like this, flip it up, do a top stitch, and then attach that piece and do the same thing. Okay.
Okay, so here it is. Now we're going to put this on top of this panel. If this one turns out to be a little too big, like maybe there's some height, um, you can just kind of trim to make sure that it is this panel size. Um, you don't want to have it smaller because this panel obviously is, the measurements are correct for the rest of the bag. So if this tends to be smaller, then you need to um, give some more room with your zipper um, between these two pieces. So now I'm going to do a top stitch all the way around at like an eighth of an inch seam allowance just to kind of make this into one piece and then you'll have your pocket lined. Okay, so now that our panel is um, complete, I'm just going to take the template. So this is going to be in your pattern. And I'll do this and I'm just going to mark I really only need these two for sure and one of these I don't know which one but so that's why I'm just marking all four um, points um, I'll do that on the other one too just so we're ready to go and these marks are just going to tell us where to place the seams of the main body of the bag okay so now we're going to take this piece and we're going to create the uh, slip pocket. We have a little piece of Velcro. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to fold it down a quarter of an inch and then I'm going to sew. I'm going to take this, um, which one, the loop, no the hook. I'm going to take the hook and when I go down my seam and I put that in there and I'm just going to sew and then it's going to sew on the velcro can't think and um, and then that's just going to prevent us from having a big box here on the outside if you want to do it the old-fashioned way and just do you know a rectangle here you can do that, but if you want to know how to hide this, that is how we're going to do it. So I'll just do that at the sewing machine because it's a lot easier. Um, and then we will figure out where this goes on here and then we can just sew that right in. So because this is waterproof canvas, it can get really thick. So to fold it and then fold it again um, would be just too much. And it doesn't fray, so I don't have to worry about that. So I'm just going like right along that, like right along this edge, and then as I go, I'm going to have my little piece of Velcro just just tucked under there. And then you'll know if you catch it. And keep going. Okay, so I did just miss it a little bit, but that's okay, I'm just going to go Okay, so 
Thankfully, I have a matching thread. Um, you can't see it as much, but that is that. And that's okay. That'll just kind of hang there, um, and then that'll work just fine. I'm just going to figure out where my other piece of Velcro is going to go. And if you want to put a little piece of double sided tape just to keep that there. I'll just do a little pin. Okay. And I'll just sew that. Kind of double check. Okay. And then from there, I'm going to put that pocket on and I'm going to just do that top stitching right along the edge so that it's kind of one panel. Okay, so now we have our Velcro and our zipper panel, and now we can work on the last zipper spot, which is going to be the front. Okay, I'm just going to take my dingle hopper and put on a pole. There we go. And because this one's in the front, I'm going to use a super cute one. Okay. So, we are going to... Do the same. And then we will flip it and do that top stitch. And then the same when we go to attach that side. Okay, I just swapped out the top thread for some orange, just so that it's not ugly. <laughs> that bottom thread will be black, but that's okay. I'm just worried about what I can see on top. Okay, so this is how it should look and now we're just going to take this piece and we're going to fold it in half and then that's going to create our zipper pocket as well as a slip pocket behind. We're going to do a top stitch right along there and then I'm just going to sew around it just to kind of do a base stitch just to keep it all in place 
and make sure everything stays lined up when I go to install it into the duffel bag. Okay, so now we're going to work on this piece and we're going to install the second half of our zipper. You will need some bias binding for this. Um, so use whatever you have. I have one inch grow grain ribbon that I'm going to be using. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is just, if your zipper fits like perfectly, then you can just find the center of your zipper. Find the center of your zipper and then the center just to make sure that it all works out and you're going to place the zipper down so this is the top and then we're going to flip it and put it down and line up our little marking there and then we're going to start to clip. You can do this if you're brave on the machine. You don't need to clip it all like I am, but just to be certain that it all fits nicely, we're just going to, my zipper fits a little too good. But this piece is going to be snipped a bit um, once we get the other piece ready. So it will all fit when, um, when it's done. So even though it's a little short there. And the reason why we, we snip off some is because the um, installing the zipper into that flat piece panel kind of changes the dimensions of it. Okay. When you're doing this type of curve, depending on the type of zipper you have, you can cut out actual notches. My scissors are really just garbage <laughs> so they're not snipping I need to get new scissors but on the inside you cut out wedges or like little triangles and when it's on an outside curve then you just cut slits that just helps it ease around the corner okay so now we're going to sew that down and then we're gonna take our ribbon and we're going to wrap it around. We're gonna wrap it around um, and kind of just to clean it up. And it also prevents the zipper from getting caught into things. Um, it kind of just allows it to move freely. I'm gonna do it on the side of the zipper so that I can see what I'm doing. And we're not going to go super close to the zipper teeth um, just because we need a little bit of that zipper tape, tape to, to, um, to allow for the closure of the, of the bag.
This one's not as hard as the others ever, I find. Is really nice so now we're just going to do the the wrapping oh, kitty's here I'm using satin now, but it doesn't matter which one you use. Whatever you got. The satin will almost make it easier for the zipper to open and close just because it is so slippery. So now we have both pieces done so we can put our poles on. This might be a little bit tricky. Uh, we kind of just need to make it so that it is even. Okay, I don't remember how I did this last time. Okay, I think I know what happened. I think I cut the ends off. So don't do that. Okay, I have to change my poles because the black ones don't really like this. This, uh, so I'm gonna use two of these. And that's the one that I put on the front, so. So, if this doesn't work, then I'm just going to do this off camera. It's not quite, but as you can kind of see what I'm doing, like, um, you want to make sure that this is kind of, so I'm just going to cut off a little bit more of the zipper on this side and then it should kind of, uh, correct itself. Okay. That works really well. Okay. So, um, don't snip your zippers ever, um, until you have your zipper pulls on. <laughs> 
I think I probably just did it out of a habit, just cutting off my excess zippers. So I'm gonna be making this two zippers. So it's gonna be able to open this way. So basically you put one zipper on this way and then we're gonna put another zipper on this way and it is going to meet in the middle. So they're gonna be going the opposite way. So this works with the non-locking zippers. So if you buy um, zipper tape and zipper pull separately, you want the non-locking ones. And if you don't know which one, what locking means, it's kind of like your jeans. You have a locking zipper on your jeans so that your zipper just doesn't come down while you're wearing them. Okay. So you want to just try to make it even. So as you can see, there's a little bump there. So that isn't even. So I'm just going to go like this and see that I do have some excess on this side from me snipping it. I'll just cut off those teeth and do it again. So as you can see, we have both of our zippers and you can kind of, it's hard to tell, but this panel sort of is above this. So that's what I mean by like the dimensions of this kind of changes because with the zipper in this one kind of, and that's good because you want it to be easy to open up your zippers. So the zipper kind of goes on its side. So then we need to take this and we need to cut it down to the size that is in the pattern. So we're going to cut it down to 16 and 3 quarters. that should work out just fine just like that okay so now we can start to put our handles on so I have this here and this is the color my daughter chose um, so I'm gonna use double-sided tape for this and I'm gonna use marking tool and my ruler and what you're gonna do is from the edge we're going to put a marking at four inches and we're gonna do that on the other side four inches and this is just where I think it looks good. Um, so, I mean, if you don't want it to here, you don't have to. And that goes the same with the uh, straps. If you want yours longer or shorter, um, it's totally up to you. We're gonna make sure that this fits with these straps. Um, which they barely do. So I'm gonna just move that chalk mark down a bit. Let's do four and a half. And this is just chalk, so it's just gonna rub off. We just wanted enough so that it will, um, will sew on top of this and it will secure this pocket down. And we're gonna sew along the edges of the webbing. Um, I'm gonna figure out my length, which is... Okay, so I'm gonna take double-sided tape and I'm going to just use that to stop 
my webbing from shifting while sewing. sure that that is centered see I can get a little closer to that four inch mark this is two and a half inch webbing so I'll try to make it straight maybe I'll just do the four okay making sure that that is not twisted and we're going to sew up both sides and then sew across and we're going to sew up seven inches. Okay, so we're going to grab the other piece, which is the back panel, and we'll do that four and a half inch measurement again. And if you wanted to put another pocket on the back, um, you could do it in the exact same manner as the front. So don't take my pattern and just, you know, you don't feel you, you have to do exactly that. You can really make this your own, customize it for your own needs. Okay, so we'll do the same thing. Um, on the one that I made for my daughter, um, I did put another piece, or the one that I made for my son, I put another piece across here just to add some more strength to the handles. Um, if you wanna do that, you can. I don't know if I'm gonna do that this time though. I need to think about it. put that cross webbing and I put it one and a half inches down. In the back just is a little too plain so this is really more for aesthetic but also does add strength to the handles.
Okay, so now we're just gonna do a little inventory check to make sure we have all of our pieces done, ready to go. We have the back panel, which has the webbing installed. Our top panel, we have our handle installed here. We have our zipper, good. Front panel, slip pocket, zipper. Side panels, we have the zipper and then we have the slip pocket. And then um, I'm going to be putting some of my piping on those pieces. And then just the last two little pieces here are the D rings and we're gonna install those when we install the sides of the bag. Those are gonna pretty much go right here. But when we're putting on the sides, we'll be able to find the center of the top of the bag. So as requested by my daughter, I'm going to put the piping on. And all you need to do with the piping is the pipe part. I'm just going to put that on the inside. And then I'm just going to sew all the way around. Um, I'm going to obviously show you how I do it. Um, but, like I said, this is going to be for an industrial machine because it is plastic. Um, so, you might want to use cotton or make your own out of the waterproof canvas if you want to put some on yourself. Okay. I'm just going to show you how I do one. So you're going to start from the bottom just because you kind of need to veer it off. Um, but I'm going to start sewing about an inch in on the edge of the webbing. I'm going to need my scissors. So this is just a basting on, so you can use a longer stitch if you want to. When you get to the outside corner, to relieve the tension, you want to put slit. This is better. Okay, so we have those slits. And we will sew. You can do right on the edge of the piping and then when you go to actually sew this panel on, sew closer to the piping and then you won't see these stitches. So when we get to this part, you're just going to veer it off. And this is difficult with the plastic. Actually, maybe I won't. This that was what you would do with the um, with the cotton. But maybe I'm just going to have them butt up against each other. <laughs> I 
It would be less noticeable, I think. Okay, so I have my piping on and now we can take our other pieces and start to put them together. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take, we're gonna take the bottom and we're going to place that with the right sides together. The bottom and then the flap panel. And then this one, we're gonna make sure that we're doing it from the top of the handle. And then that is going to go the right sides together. And then once those two seams have been sewn, then you're going to take this one and sew that one. The bottom of the back panel and then the bottom panel. Okay. They have enough. So I could definitely still do this on a regular sewing machine, but when I go to do the side panels, I can't. So I'm just starting off now with my, but if you are going to omit the um, piping, then a regular sewing machine will do this just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to actually bind these edges um, just to clean them up a bit, especially this one. So um, I'm going to do that off camera just because I'm sure this video is going to be long enough. Um, I'm going to start putting on the sides now. So like I said before, um, there's markings on the pattern to put on to the side panel. So basically the top marking is going to be for the top seam and I wasn't sure, I just um, marked both of them because I'm not sure of the orientation. Um, so we're just going to make sure that it is sort of, this is the top, it's inside out. Um, so it just happens to be that one. So I'm just going to make sure that this seam falls onto that marking and I'm going to use some nice strong clips just because this um, the 
the piping is uh, is very rigid and will, my little clips will just snap them. So I'm just going to just clip it all on. I think that's easier to do it this way. And the, the bottom markings are a kind of a guide to show you where to put the seam that goes between the back panel and the bottom and then the front and the bottom. So you just want to try to get them as close to it as possible. But it might not be perfect. I just have to see how this kind of falls into place. And you might need to snip the edges here to make that go around the corner. So I'm just going to clip and then the bottom. So it might be a little tight on the corners when you're putting it in, but that's just because you want to snip you really want to snip this fabric as you're sewing it to make it ease around those corners better. Because as you can see, it kind of looks like it doesn't fit, but it does. You just kind of got to make it fit. As I'm sewing it, then I'll be able to adjust it better. Okay, so that is that, and we can sew that on. So if you have piping, you want to just try to make it so that you're sewing on the um, inside of that stitching, just so that you can kind of not see it um, on the outside of the back. And you can feel the piping. Make sure that it is not sewing over the piping. And then, um, actually, let's make sure we do this now. This is going to be the top of the bag, and I'm going to put um, the D-ring into there for my crossbody strap. So we don't want to forget about that. And... Okay. Make sure that everything is out of the way. And then, like I said, you might need to Just kind of force it looks like it's difficult but that's only because of my piping so if you are not doing piping it is not <laughs> it's not this difficult
Okay, so we have it on. It turned out pretty good. Um, so I'm probably going to do the bias tape around again just to clean up those edges. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and put on the second panel onto the other side. I'm going to do that off camera and then after I will show you me turning the bag right side out and you get to see what and how it turned out. Okay, so we're finally done. I put binding around all the edges. Now you don't need to do this if you don't want to. Um, if you're just making it for yourself and you don't care, the bag does not fray because it's waterproof canvas. Um, so now I'm going to flip it right sides out. And the corners are really rigid because of that binding or is it, what's it called? Piping. So I kind of need to like pop them out. Okay, so now I'm just going to do up the zipper. It's going to meet in the middle. And then there you have it. I think it turned out so beautifully. It is very orange. My daughter is crazy about it. So that is the main thing. And I think that fun those fun little zippers in the front really add some little girly touch to it. We have our cross body strap handles there. So I can attach. This is actually in one from another bag. But that's pretty much how it goes. We have our handles, and uh, yeah, so I hope that you enjoy this tutorial, and I hope that you give it a try, and if you do, of course, share over on Facebook or TikTok or Instagram or wherever I am. All those links are in the description, so thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in my next tutorial. Bye, guys!